So the passage that I am sharing this morning is taken from John chapter 2 verses 1 to 11 in which we have a wonderful incident and event of marriage where our Lord Jesus Christ himself was invited along with his uh, disciples and his uh, mother was also there and it was certainly going to be a an important event and it is so significant that this particular event of the marriage which took place in Cana of Galilee province it was quite close to where our Lord grew up in the small town of Nazareth probably a few hundred people there and so Cana was about nine kilometers northeast of Nazareth and that's the location where our Lord was invited for this wedding. The significance of this particular event that took place, a miraculous event, that was the first recorded in the scriptures of the first miracle that our Lord did. And according, as we read down in verse 11, it says, what Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. It was the first of the signs that our Lord Jesus Christ did to reveal his glory. Now our Lord Jesus Christ is now entering into public ministry. As he grew up and at the age of 12 he visited the temple of Jerusalem. That's when uh, you know we had we read about the interaction with his parents when they were looking for him uh, in the temple. And then we next thing that we read about him is in his baptism. In fact, in the previous chapter, in John chapter 1, John the Baptist, you know, who baptized him, gives his testimony about Jesus Christ, of what was revealed to him concerning Jesus as the Son of God. Then we also read there about the first disciples who came along one by one mentioned about Andrew and Peter and Philip and Nathaniel and John himself. And uh, so, so the, after the baptism, you now they had, they moved uh, towards Galilee and that's where this wedding has taken place in Cana. Now, another thing worth mentioning is in chapter one, John the apostle when he starts out the chapter, he says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the fact that everything was created by the Word of God. Reading further down, we find that he says that this Word became flesh and tabernacled amongst us, lived amongst us. And of course, that is referring to our Lord Jesus Christ as the divine Son of God, the creator of all things. Now, it's interesting how this first sign and the first miracle that takes place is in the context of who Jesus Christ is. And here, Lord Jesus Christ is revealing his glory, whereby he brought joy into the whole wedding feast amongst all the people. Though it was like a private wedding, there's just a few who really knew what was happening. And one of them was Mary. Mary brought to Jesus this information with great concern and shock because 
the wine in the wedding had ran out. And so it was customary to have wine and, uh, and it would have been a great disgrace to the family, to the bridegroom who in fact is responsible for the entire uh, arrangement for this uh, wedding feast and the ceremony. And so it would have been a great insult if that problem was not solved. And so the only one who could intervene at that time, Mary knew, was Jesus, our Lord. And when he brings, she brings this concern to him and tells him, they have no more wine. It's a very, this very happy occasion was going to be, be bring a lot of shame uh, to the whole ceremony. Uh, the, the feast lacking this very important thing, it says ran out of wine, is just like saying when we have a wedding going on, or we are organized a wedding, and something significant from that wedding feast has been run out. There's no more of it available. So the lots of people who come, they will be disappointed. Uh, and this will be a talk of the town after the wedding is over. So the mother understood. Now this is, could be a very bad uh, reputation on the family and on the groom. And so she approached our Lord Jesus Christ. She knew who Jesus is. She could recollect how Jesus was born supernaturally and that his birth, her, uh, his birth was miraculous. And she knew that he had those qualities which only is possible by uh, somebody who is divine because his name was going to be called Jesus and he shall take away the sins of the world. Mary kept all these things in her heart and approached the Lord Jesus Christ knowing he could help. But interestingly, the Lord Jesus Christ, to our shock, uses, used this phrase. He said, Woman, why do you involve me? My hour has not yet come. Woman, why do you involve me? My hour has not yet come. You know, for a long time, I used to be quite shocked that the Lord would use the word woman for his own mother. And then later, I've come to understand it was actually that age and time, and we're not talk about, talking about in the English language, you know. And so the word woman that's being used was a respectful term. And uh, it was something that was done with great concern and affection. It is the same word, the word woman that he used when he was on the cross speaking to Mary, woman. Here is your son, talking about John, who is going to take care of her. So that being cleared out, the next thing is, he says, my hour has not yet come. The Lord Jesus Christ worked in the Father's timetable. He and God the Father were in total, totally in tune with the mission for why he came into this world. My hour has not yet come is used several times in the Gospel of John, in the Gospels. And every time it is used, it has reference to the death of Lord Jesus Christ. That means the Lord Jesus Christ had come to die, to bring a greater joy to all mankind, the joy of salvation and forgiveness of sins. But that 
he had to pay a price price of his death while he said that the mother in his in her heart had faith enough to believe that the lord jesus christ though his mission is in the future which is yet to happen but he would be available and will hear her request so she without responding to him immediately told the servants do whatever he tells you do whatever he tells you and so nearby it's written stood six stones of water jars the kind used by the jews for ceremonial washing each holding from 20 to 30 gallons and jesus said to the servants fill the jars with water so they filled them to the brim here it is very interesting the lord does act his answer was not no to what the request that mary made to him the answer was there is a lord's timing for everything and to go according to the lord's timing and sure enough the lord was pleased to act and he told the servants to fill the six stone water jars which was actually they were uh, used for ceremonial washings for the jews it was from the old testament itself it was very customary to go through these rites of cleansing and these waters were used for that purpose even on special occasions like this so they as mary said do whatever he tells you and they obeyed the lord and they filled the jars with water when we are talking about 20 to 30 gallons in one pot a one stone jar so we're talking about 180 gallons of water at least then he tells them draw some of it and take it to the master of the banquet they did so and then it is written the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine he did not realize where it had come from though the servants who had drawn the water knew then he called the bridegroom aside and said everyone brings out the choice wine first and then the cheaper wine after the guests guests have had too much to drink but you have saved the best till now here's some very interesting observation the master of the banquet had no idea that a miracle had already taken place and this wine was made by the lord jesus christ through his creative power remember he is the word he is god he is divine the one who created all things it was nothing for him to create wine out of plain water the ones who actually was able to know what has happened was the servants just the ordinary people around him there was no you know any kind of drama here where the the lord jesus christ will you know take call everybody's attention that there is no water and he is going to do some kind of a miracle and and uh, or some kind of a magic there was no such drama it was done in the quietness 
a need was seen and as the request came to him he met that need quietly and the ones who saw this who were very close to the situation was not only mary but the servants the disciples you know they had just started uh, following the lord they were closely observing what was happening but the miracle of the water turning into wine the best ever the best they could have and uh, no wonder the no wonder that the master of the ceremony questioned the bridegroom how come you have saved this best wine till the last they had no idea who was behind it who created that wine so we see our lord jesus christ as we read this is the one who is in master of the whole feast he is in control he is there to do something man could not do he is the creator god and what he does he does the best he saw a need and he intervened and as a result of it the joy of this great celebration of marriage continued on jesus brings joy jesus is the source of joy the hour that he mentioned is not yet here is yet to come it did happen and the right time came the lord jesus christ said the hour has come and we see in chapter 19 how he is crucified his whole purpose was not only just to satisfy the immediate needs and concerns of the people around him but his mission his ultimate goal for which he really came was to bring joy eternal joy to everyone in this world joy to the world the lord has come he came to bring joy to every person in this world for that he had to pay the price because it was the sinless god the sinless son of god who had to pay the price by his death in order to the pay the price for our salvation our sins had separated us from god in order to bring us into a relationship with god in oneness with god he paid the price of his death his blood the sinless blood had to be poured so that our sins could be washed away the ceremonial jars in which which was meant for the water which was used for cleansing i don't think it is an accident that that particular thing was done demonstrated there because as the water became wine it is the wine that jesus uses in the passover feast and he says this wine represents my blood it is the blood that i am going to pour out for the salvation and the cleansing of sin for everyone in this world the lord jesus christ has come to bring joy to all humanity so even though this is in a very small village 
less than 100 people and this miracle has taken place the first in the course of many others that the Lord has done is to teach us the great purpose for why he has come. I hope that all of us have tasted that the Lord is good. The wine that he made made everybody made glad and happy. But the greatest gift is his offering of his own self, his blood and his body that was killed on our behalf. And he rose again to give us hope and joy. Everybody in the Lord can experience this joy because it is the joy given by the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. So let us praise God for the gift of Jesus, for making it possible for us to experience the joy of the Lord, heavenly joy. In fact, joy is produced by God, is the fruit of the Spirit. The first is love, joy, peace, gentleness, meekness, kindness. So joy is definitely produced by God himself. It does not depend upon our circumstances. It's something of the heart. So may the Lord fill us with his joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And I was also remembering in the book of Hebrews when the Lord says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despised the shame. And then we find him to sit at the right hand of the Father. He took the judgment and punishment of sin for us because of the joy that he had that through his sacrifice that you and I will come into a relationship with him as sons and daughters by accepting him, by having faith in him. And so we find, we find that here in the Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory. So the Lord Jesus Christ revealed his glory, his power, his love, his compassion. And he comes into a situation to bring joy. And the latter part of the word says, and his disciples believed in him. Praise God. What God expects of us is to have faith in Him. Faith makes all the difference in the world. Let us trust Him implicitly. Let us never doubt when things go difficult for us, when things happen unexpectedly with us. I would like to share a small experience that I had in this very church. When my daughter Jyotsna, who was who whose blessings for her wedding was conducted here. And so that evening when the guests have been all coming and as we came to the church, it was really a shocking thing for me to notice, and so did my friends. It was a stormy, it was so stormy that the Shamiana outside the church, it looked like it was going to be blown away. The table with its spreads and then, um, you know, the, where the groom and the, the, the bridegroom and the bride as husband and wife, they come and sit at the reception time. That platform, you know, with the chairs and everything. And some of my friends thought the best thing is now, you know, this is going to be really bad. Was trying to take away those furniture from there. And I myself was very concerned because that's where we're going to have a reception. And it's raining and it's, uh, 
wind is blowing so bad and wonder what's going to happen. One of our friends from the church, and he and his wife were coming, driving to the church uh, from Noida, and they saw that this is going to be a bad situation, and they both began to pray in the car, asking the Lord to help so that nothing untoward happens. And um, so when he came to the church and saw the situation, he encouraged me and he said, George, nothing is going to happen. Don't worry. Nothing is going to happen. The Lord will make it possible. And guess what? After the blessing of the wedding service was over and we all came out, you know, the rain had completely stopped. The wind was not blowing at all and we could have enjoy the wonderful wedding, uh, the feast, the, you know, the reception following the wedding. This thought came to me, the Lord helps us. He brings us joy even when things look really bad. It really looks impossible. So the one who could convert the water into wine the creator of this universe. It was nothing for him to stop the wind or the rain so that we could have joy and experience his blessings that evening. I trust that this message from God's word would encourage you to trust the Lord, especially when things look difficult or impossible. Trust him. He is the Lord. He gives us Peace. He is the Lord who gives us joy. He is the source of, of it all to fulfill His gracious purpose. God bless you all and may you continue to have a wonderful, blessed New Year. Amen.